Today's word list begins with obsequious. Obsequious. Overly submissive and eager to please. Kind of like a sycophant or a flatterer. Someone who's giving you oozes of praise, but actually you kind of think they don't really mean it. They're just being obsequious. Maybe bowing down a bit too much so you think it's not sincere. They are being obsequious. Kinetic. Related to motion, characterized by movement. So a kinetic development is one that involves moving from one place to another. Or if someone says it's all about the kinetics, it's all about the movement. Leery. Suspicious. Different from the word to leer, which means to lust over something, to be leery means to be a bit suspicious of that thing. I'm leery about moving into that neighborhood. I'm worried, concerned, suspicious about doing that. Reluctant. Obviate. To prevent, to make unnecessary. The latest smartphones obviated the older versions. They were just better in every regard. You don't need to get an old phone anymore. They're unnecessary. Obviate. Ledger domain. Lovely word. Trickery. You could say that magic trick was an amazing example of ledger domain. Quick movement, sleight of hand, trickery. Knell, the sound of a funeral bell, an omen of death or failure. For example, you could use the word knell in the phrase sounding the knell. So emojis are sounding the knell for the art of communication. It's just the end of proper communication, sounding the knell. A bit like the phrase a death toll for something. A bad omen for the future of that thing. Knell. Levity. An inappropriate lack of seriousness, overly casual. Levity means literally lightness, which is where you get the word like levitate, to lift off the ground, be light and airy up into the air. But levity in a more common sense is just being a bit too light, a bit too jokey-jokey, maybe in inappropriate settings. Lacking seriousness, being a bit too casual. Mind you, the word doesn't have to be pejorative. You could say something like, his humour brought a bit of levity to an otherwise dark scenario. So it doesn't always have to be inappropriate, but it can be. Levity, lightness. Occlude. Stop up, prevent the passage of. Often too obscure as well. The clouds occluded the sun. Or you might say thick makeup occludes the pores of the skin. Stops up, prevents things from moving. A fancy word for blocks, essentially. Occlude. Officious. Too helpful, meddlesome. Getting in the way, offering help when it's not needed. It's not like sucking up, like obsequious. It's more like intervening, offering help, offering assistance. But really, you just wish they went away. Officious. Liberal. Tolerant or broad-minded generous or lavish. So yes, you can be liberal in the political sense, that you favour freedom over being conservative and traditional, but the word liberal has another meaning, which is to be liberal with praise, to be free and open with praise, being generous, lavish with your praise. The word lavish I covered at the end of my last video. So we've got the two definitions here. In the first one, tolerant, broad-minded, that's liberal in the political sense, but you've also got the word liberal in the sense of being generous. The grandmother offered sweets liberally to the local children, generously, lavishly. Two definitions there. Laconic, using few words. Most of the time the man was quiet and when he did speak, he was laconic, using only a few words. Inimical, hostile, unfriendly. Your goals are inimical to mine. Clashing, hostile, enemies, essentially. In fact, they probably have the same etymology, enemies and being inimical. Hostile, unfriendly. Inchoate, seen this before on a few other lists. Not fully formed, disorganised. Hasn't yet reached its proper structure. The universe was inchoate at its birth. It hadn't reached the form it would take in terms of galaxies and stars, etc. Disorganised, inchoate. Onerous, troublesome, oppressive, burdensome. 
The responsibility of looking after those children for those two weeks was onerous, full of trouble, full of burdens, obligations, problems. Onerous. Opine, lovely little word, to express an opinion. A fancy way of saying to give your opinion. So he opined that he didn't like chocolate, which forced her to opine on the matter and say, are you crazy? So expressing an opinion, basically, to opine. Phlegmatic, lovely to pronounce. Calm and unemotional in temperament. Full of composure, doesn't get ruffled. They are essentially phlegmatic. Libertine. A free thinker usually used disparagingly, one without moral strain. So it has a link to the word liberal, meaning emphasizing freedom politically, but libertine is more of an insult. Liberal could be used either way, but if you're a libertine, it's that you enjoy freedom so much, you're usually promiscuous, or maybe you indulge excessively in alcohol, whatever, you're a libertine, you don't have rules. And so if you call someone else a libertine, you're not really praising them, you're saying they don't really have any moral constraints. Pithy. Profound or substantial, yet concise and succinct and to the point. If your remarks are pithy, they're brief, but they leave a punch. Linked closely to witty, for example. So if you said something pithy, you likely said something witty and yet deep and profound. Licentious. Immoral, unrestrained by society. I guess that's the furthest end of the spectrum. We've had liberal, which could be a neutral word. Libertine, which is a little bit dodgy, a little bit disparaging maybe. And then we have this, licentious. Just completely immoral, feeling that they have license or freedom to do whatever they want, completely unrestrained by society or by norms. Not just promiscuous, outright dangerous perhaps, licentious. Plebeian. Crude or coarse, characteristic of commoners. So a pleb is a commoner basically, which can be used somewhat insultingly as it's just bog standard, crude, coarse, maybe like reading a tabloid newspaper, not trying to be pithy or profound, just crude, plebeian, coarse, rough around the edges, something that unsophisticated people might enjoy, plebeian. Limpid, clear, transparent. Her limpid eyes were clear and innocent. Limpid, clear, nothing to hide. Plucky, courageous, spunky. A plucky outsider is someone who comes from the outside with courage and boldness. That was a plucky adventure, needing courage. Lionize, to treat as a celebrity, almost to treat someone as a lion, something that you would respect and revere and not mess around with. To lionize someone is to glorify them, treat them as a beloved celebrity. Lysum, easily flexed, limber, agile. The Lysum gymnast could jump in any direction she wanted. She was so agile. Lysum. Polemic. Controversy, argument, verbal attack. You could think of polemic as a noun or a verb, but essentially it means hostile criticism. His polemic against the government raised a few eyebrows. Or in her departing email, she offered a polemic against the management at the company. A verbal or written hostile criticism attack argument. Polemic. Opprobrium. Public disgrace. If you do something scandalous, you could face a deep degree of opprobrium. Public disgrace. Opposite to approbation, which is praise, opprobrium is disgrace, shame, attack. Listless, lacking energy and enthusiasm. A bit like the word lethargy or ennui. To be listless, you're just not facing any direction. I think it was like from ancient times where a ship would list in one direction, would tend to go in one direction with the wind. If you were listless, the ship just didn't go in any direction. It just sort of floated there. And if a person is listless, they don't really have a direction, a purpose. They lack energy and enthusiasm. Political. 
or politic, I should say, shrewd and practical in managing or dealing with things, diplomatic. But did you know that the word politic is an adjective where you can describe someone who's just trying to be a bit Machiavellian, a bit diplomatic, a bit scheming, shrewd, maybe playing one group off against another. They're being politic. Maybe they're asked about something controversial and they stay silent. They're being politic. They're trying to manage things, manage people. They don't want to opine too much. They're trying to stay politic. And that's an adjective that looks like and is related to political and politics, but not many people know that subtle distinction with the adjective politic. With no S at the end or AL at the end, it's just the word politic. To be politic is to be wise, shrewd and prudent in managing your words or managing your positions. Politic. Rhetoric. Effective writing or speaking. Now you probably know that a rhetorical question is one that is not supposed to be answered. Like in an argument, if someone says, do you really think I should do that? They're not asking a question. Do you think I should do that? They're just telling you. No, I shouldn't have done that. Do you really think I should do that? That's a rhetorical question. You're not expecting an answer. But rhetoric is actually something slightly different. It's the art of effective writing or speaking. So if someone is a brilliant rhetorician, they are someone who is brilliant at speaking or writing persuasively. They've mastered the art of rhetoric. Livid. Discoloured from a bruise, but more commonly, reddened with anger. If someone is livid, essentially they are furious, angry to the point where they've turned red. Livid. Lugubrious. Sorrowful, mournful, dismal. Different from salubrious, which means healthy, promoting good health. Lugubrious means sad, dismal, squalid. Related to mourning, perhaps. Grieving for something lugubrious. The lugubrious atmosphere of the darkened church. Lumber. To move slowly and awkwardly. So lumber, as you may know, is the wood that you can cut down in forests, a lumber camp, for example. But to lumber somewhere is to sort of move slowly and awkwardly. You're lumbering around like maybe a gorilla would do or a big bear. Not elegantly and quickly, not like a lysome athlete, but you're lumbering like a panda maybe. I don't know. Any animal that moves slowly and awkwardly, lumber. Machination. Great word to pronounce. Machination. I use that word a fair bit, even though it's really fancy. A plot or scheme. You need to see through his machinations. He's just plotting against you. Or I'm tired of the machinations of politics. All those plots and counterplots. Machination. Cloying, sickly sweet, excessive. A cloying smile is maybe a fake smile from a young girl where it's like so sweet, but it's too much. Like you can tell it's fake, it's cloying. Or if someone sends you flowers every day for like two weeks, it's like, that's cloying, that's too much, too sweet, it's too much, too far. Ribald, humorous, but in a vulgar way. Maybe someone who is libertine might tell a few ribald jokes. Humorous jokes, but usually related to sex or promiscuity, vulgarity, rudeness. Rococo. Very highly ornamented. It's a type of style of ornamentation and decor in a house, Rococo. But you can use the word slightly more metaphorically to say anything that's a bit overdone, over stylized. But honestly, I suspect this wouldn't come up in the GRE. Because Rococo is more about a distinct style of like, white engraving on ceilings or near chandeliers. It's a particular style, so more of interest if you're into fashion, decor, interior design. Impune. To call into question, to attack verbally. How dare you impugn my reputation? Call it into question. Or his actions impugned his integrity. Called it into question, made people doubt it. Impune. Coalesce, to grow together to form a single whole. Often a word beginning with co means together. So to coalesce is to grow together, to come together, to merge into one. For example, the two puddles coalesced into one larger pool. 
it grew into one bigger pool. Coffer. Strong rocks are large chests for money, but companies and individuals can still use this word even if they're not talking about a literal chest. So for example, can you cough up some cash for our coffers? <laughs> That's probably quite confusing to listen to, but cough up some cash, like can you give me some cash for my coffer? Not literally, I haven't got a chest here waiting for gold, like into my bank account. My coffer's looking a bit empty at the moment, can't really afford to go out tonight, meaning my bank account is looking very empty, I can't afford it, coffer. Cogent, convincing, well-reasoned, persuasive. Perhaps the person who is giving a cogent argument has studied the art of rhetoric. They can speak well, so their argument is convincing, often short, maybe a bit pithy, well-reasoned, clear, cogent. Whimsical, seen this in a few other lists. Acting in a fanciful or capricious manner, unpredictable, essentially following their whims, following their momentary desires without really much plan. Just following their instincts, being whimsical. Not necessarily pejorative, you could attack someone and say, oh, you're just whimsical, silly, you don't have a clear plan. But it could also just be fun. Like, it's good to be whimsical on holiday. Just doing whatever you want, not planning it out, being unpredictable, having fun. Wily. Clever, deceptive. The wily fox tricked the rabbits and caught them or the wily agent boosted his fees on the side. Anything clever, a bit cunning. Cunning, I think, is the perfect description of the word wily. Collusion. Collaboration, complicity, conspiracy. I think a lot of people might know this word. If you collude with someone, you're acting together, but in a sinister way, on some sort of conspiracy. It's not celebrating it, so collaboration is a positive word. To collaborate with two teams, they're working together in harmony. But if you're colluding with them, that's a sinister thing. That means you're scheming to maybe one-up the opponent or outwit your opponent. Or maybe collusion between a ref and a team to corrupt a game, for example. A conspiracy. Wizened. Shriveled, withered, wrinkled. The wizened old man looked down at the children. The wrinkled, tired Withered man, maybe with leathery skin, shriveled, maybe not as tall as he once was. Wizened, usually about an older man. Wraith, less common word. Ghost or a spectre, the ghost of a living person. I think in Lord of the Rings they were called the ring wraiths, the ghosts, the black riders. So it's a scarier, fancier word for ghost. Wraith. Yoke, lovely word, to join together. You are yoked in marriage. Two people join together in marriage. Or maybe working animals on a farm are yoked together back in the olden days. Maybe oxes or horses were yoked together to work on the farms. Zenith. The culmination, the peak. I think in one of the previous videos in this list, we talked about the nadir, the lowest point, And then we have the zenith, the highest point. I'm at the zenith of my career, the highest point I've ever been or ever will be, the peak. Iconoclast, very common for these lists. One who opposes established beliefs, customs, and institutions. So classed, they clash with icons. They clash with the established experts, beliefs, traditions. So art used to be very hyper-realistic, and then an iconoclast came along and created surrealism, where nothing looks quite as it seems. Martin Luther was an iconoclast. He attacked the established beliefs, customs, and institutions. Convoluted. Intricate, complicated, complex, in a confusing way. That's a convoluted argument. So many layers, I don't really understand what's going on. Convoluted. And finally, cosset. Great word to end on, because I haven't seen it in any other lists at all. To pamper, to treat with great care. You cosset your children a bit too much. You pamper them, spoil them. It doesn't have to be pejorative. It can be praising. I'm just going to cosset my wife this weekend. Pamper her, treat her with great care. And feel free to indulge or cosset this video with a like and a comment. And well done for getting all the way through the list. Only one more video to go in this series. 
And then for my next vocab video after that, I'm planning a massive one. It's going to be epic. Have a great day.